The next talk will be from Xiao Shen, and uh, she's from Texas A&M, and she is on the job market this year. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Michael, for the nice invitation. So I will talk about the multi-stationarity in structured chemical reaction networks, and this is a joint project with Alicia, Mercedes, and Anne. So similarly as the first speaker, we also started this project in Banff last year. So I will start this story with a very well-known chemical reaction network. So it's a very simple one. Suppose we have a protein in our cell, so this is a protein. And once we have a signal in the cell, the ATP gonna transform. ATP is a protein chemist gonna transform a phosphorylation group P to our protein. And once the transmission of the signal is completed, the protein gonna lose gonna lose this phos phosphate group. So that's it. It's very simple. So this process can be described by the six chemical reactions. So suppose my M is that protein, and the MTKK is is the uh, is the protein chemist. So under the action of MATP, MATKK, the M becomes this MT, and inversely the MT can lose this P under the reaction of another chemist MKP3. So we have six reactions and six species involved in this process. So right now, if I add some red constant, the red case and H's into my network, and also I denote the concentration of the species by the axis, then we can describe how the concentration changes as time goes as time goes by the differential equations here. So as you noticed, all the expressions on the right side of my ODE system are polynomials, are polynomials. And one more thing is that these polynomials are usually algebraically dependent. So for example, if you look at the first, and the third polynomial on the second column here, look at this one and this one. We add them up, you will get you will get zero. That is what <coughs> algebraically dependency means. Okay. But this algebraic dependency will give us conver conversationals. So that means the derivative of x4 plus derivative of x6 is zero. Right now, if we integral on both sides, then we will get x4 plus x6 is a constant, is a constant. So x4 plus x6 is a constant. So this basically means, means uh, the concentration of a certain kind of protein is always the same during this process. So this x4 is MKP3, and this X6 is MP, MKP3. Both species contain this protein group MKP3. So that means the concentration of this group MKP3 is a constant in this process. So any questions so far? Great. So I just call this constant is C MKP3. And similarly, we can come up with the other two conservation laws. And we get three more linear equations. So right now, if we, if we fix the rate constant to the red case and H's, and also we fix the total constant to the C's, then my system will have finitely many speed states. So the number of speed states will give us insight on, insight on whether the network can have a significant 
significantly different behaviors depending on the initial concentrations of species. So that's why the biologists are interested in the number of steep state. So right now, let me make my problem statement a little bit more formal. So in general, for a given network, I can similarly write down the differential equations. It's a dynamic system. And here, the red color is just the vector of the rate constant. That's my red case and H's in the previous example. And also, we have a linear system of conservation loss. And here, the W is just the coefficient matrix coefficient, coefficient matrix. And the C is just a vector of constant, total constant. And for a given positive rate constant and a positive total constant, we say the positive x is a steady state. If the x is a solution of my polynomial system in the ODEs, and also the x is a solution of my conservation laws. And we say the network has multi-stationarity if for some rate constant and total constant, we have at least two distinct state states. And the important question is that for which kappa and C, a given network will have multi-stationarity. So from the computational point of view, this is a real quantifier elimination problem. So let me explain to you a little bit on this real quantifier elimination, what that means. So it's basically the algorithm in real algebraic geometry. Suppose we have this quadratic equation x squared plus bx plus c, b and c are parameters, and x is a variable, this is this is some equation we want to solve from middle school. Suppose we want to know when for which B and C we're going to have a real solution to this equation. So we can formulate my question in this quantifier formula. So exists a real number x such that x is a solution. And we also know this formula will be equivalent to this, this expression involving only b and c, b squared, negative 4ac, is no less than zero. So the algorithm for carrying out this output for the input is called real quantifier elimination. Since it's an algorithm, there is a bit history here. So the first algorithm for real quantifier elimination was given by Paschke, but unfortunately, this complexity of this first algorithm is even not bounded by any elementary expression in terms of the input. So a major breakthrough was this second cylindrical algebraic composition method and also many people are still working on this. But as you know, the complexity of this CAD method is double exponential. So this little n is the number of the unknowns. So in my first example, this n will be the total number of all the parameters h, k, c, and the x is. So even for a small network, this n can be a large number, okay. And the best method so far we know has still the exponential complexity. So even though, in theory, we can solve this problem by quantifier elimination, but it's not that practical for our chemical reaction network, multistationary problem. So the goal of this talk is to quickly determine the multi-stationarity and the compute a witness for a given network. So witness is a kappa and C such that 
our network has multi-sessionality. But due to the complexity of the program, we cannot expect to do this for general network. So we got to do it for some structured network. And we will see what the structure means at the end of this story. Okay. And our method is based on this critical functions. So now I will explain to you what a critical function means by the first example. So I first simplify the polynomials in the first example you saw. So here, the three underlined Underlying equations, they are just the conservation laws. The conservation laws, I'm sorry, it's just the conservation laws. And the other three polynomials, the G2, G5, G6. So they are simplified from the original six ODE system, as you see. So right now we have a square system. We have six unknowns axes. And also we have six numbers. Six, six of parameters. And here the capital K, K1, K2, K3, they are rational functions of the weight constants in my network. So since it is square, so I can take the Jacobi matrix of the G with respect to the X. And if I compute the determinant, so let's go back. So since all the C here, they are linear in the system. So once you take the Jacobi, the C will go away. So when we have this determinant of Jacobi matrix, we have no C. It's a polynomial in capital K and the X. And one more thing is that, let's go back again. So the K here, they are also linear in my system. So we can easily solve the K in terms of X is. So for example, this K1 is equal to x6 over x5, right? So we can solve all the case. So we solve all the case. And the one more thing is that notice that by this expression here, we see when all the axes are positive, my case will be also positive. So we also say this is a positive perturbation from the speed state equation. So now let me substitute my positive perturbation into this determinant of Jacobi matrix. I'm gonna get a rational function only in x. So this rational function cx is a critical function for this more example. So any questions so far? Okay, great. So now what can we say by this critical function, actually we have a criterion for multi-stationarity. So suppose my network has a positive perturbation, just like the example. And also suppose this network is conservative. Conservative just means every species takes a part in the conservation laws. And also assume the network has no boundary state states. A boundary state state <coughs> means a state state, a state state with some zero coordinates, with some zero coordinates. And also, just to denote a number r, denote by this r the s negative rank w. So the number s will be the number of species in my network. And W is just the coefficient matrix in my conservation loss. And now, if for all the positive x star, the sign of my critical function evaluated at this x star is equal to the negative 1 to this r, then there will be only one seed state. If there exists some x star such that my critical function has a sign negative 1 to r plus 1, then there will be at least two state states. And furthermore, if all state states are non-degenerate, 
Then there are at least three steel states, and the number of steel states will be always the odd number. Will be always the odd number. So before I explain why this is true, how about we apply this criterion to our first example and see what will happen? Okay, let's do that. So first we have a bunch of conditions here. So let's check the condition first. First, it admits a positive parameterization. We already saw that. So then it's conservative. So conservative, we have three conservation laws. Conservative just means the x1 to x6, you can find all of them in these three equations. That's also true. One, two, three, four. You can count that. Has no boundary speed states. We can do this. So from this G2, G5, G6, you will see if you make any coordinates x, i, 0. So these three guys are binomials. If you just choose either of these six variables, 0, then you will get a solution with all x is 0. But here, from the conservation law, we know the C1, C2, C3, they must be positive number, right? So there is no boundary steady state. Great, now we can apply our criterion now. Let's do the criterion. So first, we compute this sign. This R plus 1 is the sign we want to have. So the R is number of species. That's six species. Rank W, so the W is here. It's pretty clear the rank is 3. So our R is just 3. So the multi-stationary sign is just a positive sign here. So then if we want to have the multi-stationarity, we want the critical function has this positive sign at some point x star. But what our critical function is, so this is the critical function. We do have a negative sign in front of a positive polynomial. So that means, that means for any positive x, the sign of Cx is negative. So the multi-stationary sign is impossible. So the conclusion is that we have no multi-stationary. Any questions? Great, great. So now, let me add one more cycle and then make a double phosphorylation, dephosphorylation cycle here. So this time, the steady the state equation plus the conservation loss. So I, I just list the simplified polynomials here. We have nine equations in nine unknowns. OK, so we play the similar game. We compute a critical function that's the determinant of Jacobi matrix with a positive parameterization plugged in. And we have this critical function. And then we compute the multi-stationary design. Again, this time, we have s is 9, rank is 3. Again, so this, this sign this time is a negative sign, is a negative sign. So now a goal is to find a point such that my Cx is negative. So how can we do that easily? So let's look at here. So this Bx is homogeneous. And all monomials, mon all monomials are R square free, R square free. So that means you only need to choose a negative term. And for example, I choose this term. Make this term to the point such that this term is sufficiently large. Then the sign of my dx and also cx will be the same sign with this particular term. Do you agree with this? Okay. So now we choose this term, x1, x4, x8. And I find a point such that the x1, x4, x8 are very, very large. For example, 100 is very large to me. And all the other coordinates are just 1. So we plug in this, this point into my cx star. It's negative. So now we can conclude the multi-stationarity. 
And next thing is to find the witness. So that is the parameter such that we have this multi-stationary. So it is quite easy to do because all the parameters k and c are linear in my equations g. So I just plug in this x star back to the original equations and I can easily solve the witness. Any questions so far? Okay, great, great. So now you may wonder why this CX critical function works. So let me roughly explain the idea from this geometry. Suppose we have only one polynomial f. I have only one polynomial f, only one parameter a, one variable x. So then the f is equal to zero will be a curve on my AX plane, so it's a real picture, a real curve. And now we want to find at least the two real solutions. So let's ignore that positive part temporarily. So what do you see? So in this univariate case, the determinant of Jacobian is just simply this partial derivative of f with respect to x. So as you see, when I choose this a here, so and draw a straight line, you will find only one solution. And this sign of the determinant of Jacobian is negative. And also in this part, the same. So when you only have one real solution, the sign of determinant of Jacobian is always negative. So only when we find one point here such that this partial derivative has this positive sign, you will find like more than two real solutions. Okay, so a standard way, so we talked about that real quantifier elimination. So standard quantifier elimination is doing the following. We find these two critical points on my curve first and project, and project these two critical points onto the parameter space A. So it's A1, A2 is a classical discriminant locus. Okay, so this is a standard quantifier elimination doing. So what we did, so we solved the parameter in terms of x and have the critical function. So what we did is that we project these two critical points onto the x side first. Onto the x side first, and once we have this x, so we can find some point here and plug Plug in that x back to the equation, that means now we find a point here, and then by the equation we can find this a. This is easier than the standard way because in the chemical reaction network, a feature is that the parameters are always linear in the polynomials. Any questions about this geometry idea? Okay, no questions? So this geometry idea is clear. So now let's think about our goal. The goal is to quickly determine the multi-stationarity. So now during the whole process, the key is to determine a critical function changes the sign or not. But this critical function is a multivariate function. So is it really trivial to determine a multivariate function changes the sign? No. And remember that this one is the determinant of Jacobi. So when my network is really large, the determinant of Jacobian is a huge, is a huge poly, is a huge polynomial or right function, right? So it's not that easy. So it's not that easy. So this is basically the non-activity program. So it's a special real real quantifier elimination program again. So it's not easy to do. But but in our case, we, we could easily do do it, right? In our first two examples. What happened is that so our critical functions are quite special. So this is the first critical function in the first example. This is the second critical function in the second example. So do you see any common things? So I believe everyone sees that this year, the common structure. So the critical function is always some monomial over some other monomial. It's not very important. Multiply this bx. bx is homogeneous. 
and all monomials in dx are square free. So since dx has this has this property, so we only need to find the term with that multi-stationary design, we can conclude multi-stationary. So it, it is very easy, you don't need to do even any more computation, okay? But is it just an accent you want to know? So how about we explore this together a bit? So this is a critical function, we computed it. So how about we compute it again slowly this time together? So I put my six equations in my first example here. And this is the determinant of Jacobi matrix. So what we did is to compute determinant of this Jacobi matrix and also plug in this positive parameterization inside. So I prepared this positive parameterization. So we're going to compute this determinant slowly, slowly this time. So how slowly it can be? So I will first exchange the second and the third column, or the, the second and the fourth row, I'm sorry. So I just simply change the two rows, exchange two rows, and you're gonna have a negative sign in front of it. No questions, I, I hope. Okay, and then I plug in this positive per parameterization. So this K1 is, is this X6 over X5, let me just plug it inside. I plug in it, okay, the positive parameterization. And now you will see, so for some, so some elements, for some entries here, we can, we can simplify it a bit. For example, I can cancel the x1 here. Let's just cancel them. I just simply cancel them. And I get this, this matrix. Any questions? No questions, but what can you see from this, this matrix here? Is there any special thing you notice? So, actually every row, they have in every row, all the entries have a common numerator. So for example, this row, we have this x5, x5, and this next one, you can consider it as x5 over x5, right? So how about we divide? Divide, divide each row by its numerator. I just simply divide each row by its numerator, and this is the matrix I, I get. And now, what do you see from the second matrix here? Is there anything special you see? So, I believe everyone sees that. So, in each column, the denominators, so in each column, the denominator is the same. And more than that, in the i column, the denominator is just xi. It's just xi. Okay. So how about this time we multiply? So so this this matrix I just copy it copy it here. Okay. So now multiply the x column by its by its denominator, and this is the final final result we get. So any questions so far? Great. So now I just copy the whole thing in my next slides, and we. We can see something. Okay. So right now, here this part will be some monomial over some other monomial. And the determinant of this matrix here gives us the Bx. And this matrix, which gives us Bx, has the Xi on the x row, as you see. So I believe right now everyone sees that this dx is homogeneous with a total degree 3 and all monomials are square free. So any questions? The question to you is that is there any bug in this final claim? So this dx might be identically zero, so I add this. So if this is not zero, then it's a homogeneous polynomial with total degree three, but never mind. So we can generalize this, this process of this, this computation, and now we can give some, some sufficient condition for us to get such a nice critical function. So in fact, in fact, if 
the state states of our network are given by a system of binomials. Plus some conservation loss here, and suppose suppose the rank of the conservation law coefficient matrix is just D. Okay. Then our critic function, so this is just simply the definition of the critic function, that is the determinant Jacobi matrix. Plugging in this positive parameterization, then it must have this form, this nice form we need. And this Bx is either the zero polynomial or a homogeneous polynomial with a total degree d. So the d is exactly the rank of the coefficient matrix of conservation loss. So for this part, we can go back. So basically, this degree d, from here you see, the d is just the number of the blue rows. So how this blue rows come from? So because we computed it slowly, slowly, right? So this, this, this blue comes from the conservation loss. So that is the number of conservation laws, so that is exactly the D. Great. Great. And all monomials are square free. And at this time, with this nice critical function, we can have a criterion for a network with binomial seed states. So suppose Suppose my, suppose my network is binomial. And using, right now, let's use the first criterion together. Suppose it's conservative and has no boundary steel state. Then my network has multi-stationarity if and only if the critical function has a term with this sign, negative 1 to r plus 1. And there are many, many examples we can find so there they are binomial networks. So any questions? Okay, great. So now so the goal of the talk is to find is quickly determine multi-stationarity for structured network. So now we have achieved our goal. So suppose my network, so structure means binomial conservative, no boundary steel state, and process will be first we compute a critical function, then search if this critical function has a term with a multi-stationarity sign. If no, no multi-stationarity. If yes, we can find a positive x star as what I did in the second example, such that cx has this multi-stationarity sign. Plug in this x star back to my steady state equations and solve the solve the weakness. So any questions? Great. And maybe you wonder when when can we guarantee the network is binomial? So there is also a list of conditions, but not in this not in this talk. So we have that that criterion in our paper. And if you are interested in you can check our paper. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so can you say, see, the conditions you were just writing, you had D non-zero. Yes. Is there anything that you can say about when, when will that D be zero? Is that, can you know that beforehand or? Actually, that if that dx is zero or not is related to an open problem in the reaction, chemical reaction network, it's called the non-degeneracy conjecture. So because for all the examples we saw so far, so the bx is never zero. So a conjecture is that the, the so, so when the bx is zero, that means for any rate constant and total constant, any state state is degenerate. So the conjecture is that so this will never 
it never happened. But this is a conjecture, so we don't know. But in practice, we just assume this B, Bx is not zero. So that's it. But if this conjecture were true, then yes, you would guarantee it, that B is never zero? Yes, right, right. But we don't know if the conjecture is true or not. Right. Other questions? I think you have a slide early in your okay. talk in which you used the term structured network. Structure. Yes, structured network. Yes, structured network. In which cases the algorithms could run faster. Mm -hmm. Do you have a general notion for what constitutes structure that would make an algorithm run faster? No. <laughs> but, but, but I will think about that. Thank you. <laughs> that's good. that's a good good proposal. The <laughs> questions? If not, let's thank our speaker again and it's a coffee break time. <laughs>